Hello there! Welcome to another Shantytown Devlog, the city block builder game where you create unique urban environments by placing objects one at a time. After the last Devlog, I decided to work on some shop object spawning mechanics. So, when you place a shop in front of a house, I wanted it to feel like a transformation, with each shop having a unique layout. This happens in three stages, the interior, the clutter, and the exterior. As soon as a shop's location is confirmed, I run through all the possible positions for interior objects and place a random one from the list there. I also do a check to make sure the objects don't overlap each other. Then I find the sockets that I've placed on these meshes and spawn some random clutter objects. Then I do a check on the exterior walls and spawn a few objects if there's space and floor below. These objects on the outside also need collisions so they don't overlap with future placements. I do a little timeline based animation on the scale of the object to get it to pop in. And each of these objects are chosen based on the type of shop, so the result is believable and diverse. All in all, I think it looks great. As I was working on this, I got what I would refer to as the call of the weird. Something that happened many times while creating my previous game, Kainga. I wanted to create a world that was parallel to ours, but with some things being really unusual. I was looking at the underpass map and decided to redo it entirely. I thought, instead of a highway, what if you built your town into like a large service pipeline above a marsh? The purpose of that map was to create a horizontally dense town, but with limited vertical space. So I wanted to keep that outline. So I made this into this. I think it looks super interesting and brings up questions of what is beyond. Why does this giant pipe exist? What's past the swamp? All in all, I think it builds out the world quite a bit. While doing this, I wanted to make the grass blow in the wind realistically. There is a simple wind node, but it looks silly, if you don't add a vertical gradient, at least. Then I decided to use this wavy noise texture and pan it across the environment. When each blade of grass is in the black area, it moves less and has a green color. But when it's in the white area, it moves further and changes slightly to yellow to highlight the wind's movement. I also set the wind's direction and strength to a material collection parameter, so all wind affected objects will be affected the same way. On this small scale, it looks pretty good. I like the solution so much, I decided to go back into Kainga and add it into there. With the larger landscapes, you can really see the wind lines clearly. But I couldn't just let the grass be the only thing blowing in the wind, so I had to make a new shader for each of the trees as well. using sine waves to make them bob back and forth. Overall, I think it was a pretty good waste of time. If you're a game dev, you might have noticed that all the work that's been done so far is purely cosmetic, and I realized I've been eating the frosting before the cake is even finished. The hardest part of being self-employed is often knowing what you're supposed to be doing each day. I have a to-do pile? You can spend weeks working on fringe topics without diving into the hard work at all. But sometimes you have to let yourself work on something fun and frivolous. When it comes to what to do, it usually helps me to chart my tasks on this type of graph. On one axis we have importance, and on the other we have urgency. I would put both the wind and the map update in this corner. Whereas things like game breaking bugs are both urgent and important and deserve to be worked on. This corner is usually a trap and this is where most of our time is wasted. Things like unimportant emails that need to be sent or posting on social media within reason. This corner here always gets ignored and you really have to push yourself to do the important things that are not urgent. As an example, I've been unhappy with the point system in Shantytown for a while. One of the foundations of the game that I feel is still isn't working as intended. But it does work, and it works alright, so it wasn't urgent to change, and I finally decided to break down the issue. On a small scale, the points work great and make sense. A table and chairs want to be next to a restaurant. Fine. Others are a bit more out there. An air conditioning machine doesn't want to be near doors. Okay, that adds a little bit of puzzle to the placement requirements. The more objects that are placed, the harder it is to read what's affecting what. And worse, while you're playing, you don't really care where your points are coming from. 
It's all shown down here, but playtesters hardly looked. And the worst part is that this type of game would be really annoying if you lost multiple times and had to replay the map again and again. So I couldn't balance the numbers to be more punishing. Players just pan the objects around the map, finding a decently high number and then place it there. And at that point, the game is just telling you where to place things determined by an algorithm. It's not a lot of creativity there. In game dev, I hear the phrase kill your babies thrown around a lot, which is a dark way of saying don't be afraid to make drastic iterations. So I did. I cut it all away. I started blast. There are no more points. No adjacency bonuses. No points goal. What is this man talking about? I. Instead, now almost all of the objects fall into three categories. Light, utility, and decor. Houses want a set amount of each of these, and when you fill up all three bars, the house upgrades. Your new goal is to upgrade a certain number of houses. From one point of view, this is a drastic change, but from another, nothing's different. <laughs> from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? I made the houses highlight when they're looking for the object you're currently holding, and the tooltips display what type of object it is. And it actually works. Somehow the gameplay has hardly changed. The only thing I feel is left behind with this cut is the opportunity for high scores, but I have some solutions brewing. I think that's it for now. I'm going to be attending a few conventions this spring, including GDC. So if you're up there, let's meet up. Thanks to the new patrons, by the way. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.